guys, uh, Eric here from Tactical Intelligence. Um, I just want to, in this video, review quickly this Caro heat, kerosene heater. Um, I've, I purchased it around two weeks ago. I've been using it for about that long of a time. And uh, I just want to say it's a fantastic heater, off, off the grid heater or emergency heater. Um, and it's perfect for apartments or um, you know a rental home that you can't get something like this, like a wood stove. So uh, normally I, I heat with wood, um, but I'd like to have some other backups and just like for you guys uh, to do some reviews. So you might have remembered in the past I did a review on this heater here, the Mr. Uh, the, the Mr. Heater, the Big Buddy Heater. It's a propane one. It pumps out about 18,000 BTUs on high. Fantastic little heater. I really love it. Um, but I also wanted to play around a little bit with the kerosene heaters. I heard a lot of good things about them. And so for the last two weeks, again, I've been kind of primarily heating with this, uh, not with wood. And it's done a fantastic job. So let's kind of quickly go over this, uh, the benefits of it, what I like, what I don't like, and, and compare it a little bit with the Big Buddy. So first of all, I love that it's kerosene. And kerosene, if you've never um, used it before, it's a really stable fuel. And if you, especially if you live in an area that has um, a gas station that has a, a kerosene pump, it's a lot more economical than, let's like, say, going to Lowe's or Home Depot where you get like a gallon of camping kerosene for about 10 bucks. You can get a gallon at the gas station uh, for about 380 right now in, in my area. So what I really like about it is, is that it's a very safe fuel. And typically you don't want to store fuels indoors under any circumstances, especially propane. Uh, propane's like a, a gas, and it tends to, um, if, especially if you have a leaky bottle, it will leak out and go to the lowest area in your home, uh, which and it will stay there. And if a spark happens or something, it's really dangerous. So you never want to store propane uh, indoors or even really use it, unless it's a small camping bottle like used for this. Um, what the kerosene, though, is stable enough that I feel comfortable storing it indoors. And if you notice, it's a lot like diesel. You can take a match and... Um, put it right into the kerosene, it's not going to do anything. It just comes, um, it, it, it extinguishes a flame. It's really hard to light unless you have a wick, something like a paper towel or like in this case, this heater has a wick as well. So just so you sh know that I'm not using water here, I'm going to pour it back into um, the heater. It's actually dripping a little bit. Okay, so that's the, really the first uh, benefit of, of heating with kerosene. Um, uh, the second thing, it, it's, it seems to be pretty efficient. It, it, this tank holds about two gallons, a little bit under two gallons, but with those two gallons I can heat for about um, 12 hours on high. And when it was in the low teens or single digits these past couple of weeks, I pretty much heated with it the entire, entire day. I would fill it up twice during the day. Um, so if you, 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 you calculate that at, you know, about $4 a gallon uh, for four gallons, it's about 16 bucks a whole day. Now, most of the days when it hits around upper 20s or 30s, I, d I didn't have to keep this thing running the whole day. I would only keep it part way. So let's kind of just take a look at the functioning of this heater, how, how you light it. Um, there's really two ways. It comes with uh, little batteries, like D batteries that you can put inside, and it has an electrical starter. So um, we'll we'll kind of sh show in here, if, I'm not sure if you can see with the camera, but we'll do our best. Uh, if you crank this little knob here, push the auto start button, and you might be able to see this glowing element there. Now that element, when it gets in contact with the wick, you can see here, you can see that it, it starts the wick. So that's one way of uh, starting it. And it takes about five minutes to get this thing rocking and rolling to where it's um, producing enough heat that it, it produces a nice solid burn. So I'm, I'm actually going to extinguish it just to show you uh, another way of lighting it if you don't have batteries. So another way is just with a match. And it's a really simple process. But you just light the, light the match. Sa oh, same kind of thing, you want to crank this up. Lift this thing up and just touch the wick and then it lights that way. So similar process, but you don't, you're not dependent on batteries to light it. 
Okay, so um, this thing's been running for about five minutes. It's usually about how long it takes to um, get a good burn going. Um, so basically, I just wanted to talk about some of the other things with this heater. Uh, one of the things that people seem to not like with kerosene heater is the smell. And um, I was a little bit worried about it in the beginning because it, it really smelled bad and I was and the fumes were pretty bad. It says in the manual to um, to burn it for about an hour or two and it should then burn off all the paints or whatever solvents or different things that, that the heater has uh, um, to get all that stink out. But you know what I actually noticed it wasn't until about two or three tankfuls, so a full like 36 hours. I mean, I, I put this thing through the ringer, and only after that time did it stop really smelling up the house. I mean, the fumes were pretty bad. Um, but after that point, and I have really clear kerosene. I mean, you saw in that little glass, it looked like water. It's not the kerosene, because if you use dyed kerosene or uh, really bad grade kerosene, you'll, you'll get a smell too. So you really want to make sure that you have pure K1 style kerosene. Um, so just some safety things too. What, what I like about it too here is that it has an auto shut off. So if it detects, similar to the big buddy, if, it, if there's low oxygen and there's a potential for carbon monoxide poisoning, because uh, carbon monoxide forms in the presence of, of little oxygen, um, it will automatically shut off. And same with this heater. Both of them have that. I do have a couple of uh, carbon monoxide um, alarms in the home as well and I would definitely recommend that if you don't have that if you're heating with either one of these uh, but if you have that you should be good so again uh, it has the auto shut off um, it burns for about 12 hours and the smell again it the only time I smell now with this heater is upon startup I'll, if so if you want to avoid that you can just start it up outside and, and carry it in and shutting it down also when it gets to a low burn when there's not much fuel left um, the flame will actually reduce and flicker and, and when it flickers like that it also pr creates a smell. So that's pretty much it. It's a very simple heater. It puts out about 23,000 uh, BTUs compared with the, the big buddy of 18,000. Um, I really like both and they both have their uh, applications. If you don't have kerosene in your area then I would definitely recommend getting one of these propane ones. Um, if you do have kerosene this thing puts out a ton of heat and I would recommend getting that. And I, I find that this one's a little bit more easier to use um, than the propane one. Uh, other than that, I really like both of them and w would highly recommend either for uh, emergency heating. Another thing real quick that I wanted to uh, show as far as comparison, what I like the Big Buddy better than the Caro Heat here, is this one really only has one setting. Um, you can put it on high but the problem with it, it creates a lot of soot, and you can kind of see smoke coming out. Um, but then if you put it too low, there's, there's a concern that, you know, you're not getting a clean burn and you can emit carbon monoxide. So you want to have just, there's a certain level, and in the manual it states you can read about it. Um, it's not dangerous in the, or really complicated to keep it at that heat, but um, it only really has one heat. So it's constantly putting out 23,000 BTU. You can turn it off and on, so if it, your house gets or your place gets uh, too warm, you can just shut it off. But it's it's not as variable in temperature as like the big buddy. This one here has three settings. It's like a low, where just one of the elements glows, a medium, where uh, I think uh, one of them glows hot, and then the high, where both of them glow hot. And so it, it, the temperature differential is, is a lot easier or better to control with the big buddy than this one. If you don't care about turning things off and on, really it's not a huge deal, then this one's fine. Um, otherwise, you know, if you really want more of adjustable heat, then the big buddy might be a, a better choice for you. One, one thing that I forgot to mention was um, with kerosene that I really like is not only is it really safe that you can take a match and you know extinguish it, um, so you don't have to worry about s s spillover in most cases. Uh, the other thing that is great about kerosene is that it's extremely stable in the sense of storage. So I still have kerosene from 15, 20 years that I have in the camping cans, and the stuff works great still. So as far as the fuel that will last for a long time and store for a long time, kerosene is a clear winner. Uh, propane's great as well. I just find kerosene kind of a little easier, especially if you have access to the, 
the gas pumps that you can fill up uh, five gallon tanks of it. So having 20 gallons on hand will provide a good amount of heat um, for a, a, a good duration of time. So uh, another thing to think about with kerosene heaters is just, again, the benefits of, of that fuel and the micro storage.